you know, I didn't grow up with money. We, 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 we weren't rich by any means, but uh, we built, we took this business from zero. Now the company's worth $7 billion. What's the worst thing that can happen if you try? You just have to keep grinding every day. Every day you get up. When you're at home, like you're dreading Monday, man, stop. Stop and get another job because you're in the wrong place. That, that, that's not healthy for you. I knew I wasn't going to college. I knew that wasn't a reality. And I didn't really want to go to college. One of the things that I was very lucky in my life with is I knew exactly what I wanted to do. From the time I was a young age, I knew I wanted to be in the fight business. And people thought it was crazy. Because when you look at different, at the time when I grew up, you had Don King, Bob Arum. These guys were the, were the big promoters uh, in the fight game and, and you know, Everybody was set in their ways. They, they, they didn't think that, uh, you know, the fight business could change. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I believed it could. I, I had a lot of ideas and I believed I could, I could change the business. And I, was, I, I worked in Boston at a place called the Boston Harbor Hotel. I was a bellman in there. I was 19 years old. I made good money. You know, th there's some guys that get those jobs and those are the type of jobs they, they, they you know, they want those jobs forever. And it's a good job. It's not yeah. a bad job. Yeah. It just wasn't for me. I was literally standing in the lobby one day, and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? This isn't me, this isn't what I want. And I walked out the front door, and one of my good friends, he's still one of my good friends today, who was the doorman, says, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm quitting. And he's like, he's like, what? What are you gonna do? I said, I wanna be in the fight business. He said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen if you try? If, if the day that I walked out of that hotel, right and i went to do this it doesn't work out i can go back and be a bellman again yeah. whenever i want to i always knew what i wanted to do and every day when i woke up i would work toward that goal i i, I listened to both <laughs> of those tapes awesome. everything that was in there is absolutely true makes sense and applies to everybody's life it it, it really does so if you want to know what does it take to take things to the highest level What's going to take to change my business permanently, not temporary? You can go home and you can install some of these strategies, skills, tactics, tools, insights, and see a significant change. But if that change is going to be a lasting company of value that keeps growing, then the things you've learned here have to become the standard for your organization, not something you did for a period of time. Whenever you look at somebody and say, why are they more successful than anybody else? It's always because of step one, they've raised their standard. If you go back home and you want to change your life in any way, personally, professionally, or your company, as boring as it sounds, as stupid as it ain't it sounds, you might say, I spent all this time, this energy, this money, and you're going to tell me to raise my standards? Yes. Because even though that's not sexy, it is the only thing that creates lasting change. Yeah, so there was a kid named cool. mine, Lorenzo Fertitta. We went to school together, and uh, when I came back to Vegas, a mutual friend had a wedding, and we both went to the wedding. We bumped into each other, and he had just got on the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and he heard that I was doing boxing out here, and, and uh, he said, I want to hook up and start training. Yeah. So we got together on that Monday, which was in 1995, and we've been together ever since. The, the owner of the UFC at the time was a guy named Bob Meyerowitz out of New York. One day on the phone, it just all erupted and he said, you know what, there is no more money. It's all over, this, 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 this thing's in trouble. I don't even know if I have enough money to put on one more show. Wow. And I said, interesting, uh, okay. So we hung up, I called Frank and Lorenzo. They were in who had become my partners and they were in Florida at the time. They owned station casinos here in Las Vegas, local casino. And uh, I said, the UFC's in trouble, and I think we should buy it. I think we could buy this thing. We started making some calls. A month later, we bought the UFC for $2 million. $2 million. And sold it for? $4.025 billion. So, so we Renzo bought it for $2 million. So that day, I made a bunch of calls. That night, I call him when he's on his way home, and I said, you know what? <laughs> Maybe six, seven million bucks. We're in almost 40. I think I could get six or seven million. And uh, he said, okay, I'll call you tomorrow.
the first thing you think is, man, I just blew $40 million of my friend's money. Yeah. That's the first thing you do, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, th that's not fun. You've put all this time and energy into it, and, uh, and, and, it, and it just doesn't work. It, it, you know, it, it didn't work the way that you thought it would. Yeah. Then he called me back the next day and said, fuck it. Let's keep going. First of all, when, when you have a business idea, um, there's always going to be detractors and people that think, you know, it won't work. You're always going to have those people around you and in your life, even when you're successful, believe me. It gets worse when you're successful. Um, then, you know, you have to get to a point where you, you don't doubt yourself. You're so into this thing and you know that it's going to work. Timing is everything in life. Timing is everything. We built, we took this business from zero to where it was. We create zillions of dollars in taxes, all these different things, you know, all these people that, all the people that we employ all over the world, that when we go into the economic impact we have on cities, when we go into their cities, all this stuff, we're a monopoly now. We're being looked at as monopoly. So we're spending, we're spending, you know, seven, eight million dollars a year trying to defend ourselves from the government wow. as monopoly. Wow. That, th these type of things happen. And, and I could go on forever. You just, you go in, you do the right thing and you just, you, you pay your money and you just take your lumps when you own a business. You don't try to fight these guys. You just, you just roll with the punches and you do what you're supposed to do. So we went in and we met with California, Nevada, New York, um, New Jersey, and the list goes on and on. Everywhere that had a real strong, yeah. everybody that had strong regulation, um, we went in and, and met with. Yeah. We educated them on the sport, and we started to open up and, and, and getting this regulated in all the different cities. And, and then we started to go to other parts of the world and get it regulated, and the and list goes on and on. Then I had to fly from state to state and meet with all the reporters. You start meeting with the, uh, you know, from the New York Times to the this, that. Local sports reporters who cover sports every night yeah. in, in your hometowns. I literally flew around the whole country doing this for years. Yeah. And nothing happens overnight. You just have to keep grinding every day. Every day you get up and it's, you know, for, for us to, to, to make this happen with the UFC, it was really all about education. Yeah. And I always knew two things. If I brought these athletes in and you met them, you would realize the type of people that they are and right. they're not what you expected them to be. Right. And if I ever got you to a live event, Nobody walks out of a live event and goes, yeah, I don't ever want to see one of these again. That's true. So, the energy is unbelievable. I knew, I knew if I could get you at least to get, whether you were a sponsor, a TV network executive, or whatever it was, if I could get you to the live event, I got you. I love when people doubt us. I love when people yeah. say no. You know, even, even when we just sold the company, when we sold the company, it's been two years now, right? We sold the company and uh, then everybody, all, it's always surrounded by, anything you do positive in your life and anything that's huge, it will immediately be surrounded by negativity, yeah. right? Immediately, get ready for it because no matter how successful you become, one thing never goes away, negativity. Haters, whatever you want to call them, it's always there, and you have to read it every day. I separate myself from it. And back in the old you days, when we, when we started, I used to read it to the point where I was just nauseous, you know? Yeah. I do not read any of that stuff because one of the things that I have learned over, over my many years of doing this, their opinion doesn't matter. Their opinion <laughs> means nothing. It is literally an opinion, it's negative bullshit, and it means nothing to you. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't affect, unless you're the type, sick, twisted type of person like me that likes to let it fuel you. You let it, it's like your, you know, it's like your fuel. And, and, and other than that, it's useless. It means nothing. Everything that the reporters write, everything that these people say, just don't eat, do your thing. Stay on your course, stay focused, and, and, and keep your eye on the prize and, and, and everything comes together.
I love that stuff. I, 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 so now I just tune it out. I do my thing. When we first bought the company, when, when Ari bought the company, yes. and, and uh, he overpaid for it. Overpaid for it. These guys are in big trouble now. now. Now they have so much debt hanging over their head. They're this, they're that. Their TV deal is up with Fox. You know, all this stuff's going back and forth. So, and, and, and a lot of these things are true. Our TV deal is up with Fox. We do have a lot of debt. But these are all things we knew going into it. You know, and then everybody keeps asking me, why did you stay? You know, when you make that kind of money, there's always this thing about fuck you money. Everybody knows that term. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to tell the boss to kiss my ass if I ever get that lottery or I hit this or hit that. If you're looking for fuck you money, you're in the wrong place already. You already know you're not in the right place. Okay? Because there's no such thing. I just made more money than I ever dreamed I would make. I don't want to leave. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Listen, I've been on trips and stuff. I can't stand three-day weekends. I hate three-day weekends, man. I'm like, man, I'm, I want Monday to come again. That's how much I love what I do. First of all, when, when you're in that position, we didn't need any money. And, and, and everybody's telling me, oh my God, out that you love what you're doing and it's about the journey, the people you're doing with it, that you're having fun, you're getting, it's really not work. It's, it's actually fun and you enjoy every day of your life. Every one of us is a fighter. Every day you get out of bed, you, when you get out of bed every morning, right? You get up out of bed, life is standing right there to kick you in the face. Ready, leg cocked, ready to go, to kick you in the face. Cause every day when you get up, bad shit's coming at you, right? Forget about work, your personal life, everything. Car don't start, the this, the that. Life is ready to get you, you know? And you gotta get up and you gotta fight through that bullshit every day, you have to. Can't roll over, man, you just get, you gotta fight through all the shit that life throws at you. Then, then you get to a point where life's throwing a bunch of shit at you, now work's throwing a bunch of shit at you. You know, your, your business that you have to fight for every day. And you have to get up and you have to have that to get up and fight every day, man. And, and once you get into it and you start, and you start fighting, it, it becomes addictive. You actually like it. I love competition. I love, uh, I, I love things that, I love adversity. I love when adversity comes at us. I love solving problems. I, I love, you know, yes. in, in, in personal and professional life. I, I really do like, when, I, when, when we bought this company, ESPN would not cover us, would not cover us, wouldn't talk to us, wouldn't meet with us. January 1st, we're on ESPN with one of the biggest deals they've ever cut in combat <laughs> sports history. So it, it took 18 years. You have to be a leader. Yeah. You have to be a leader and you have to get people to believe as you believe and to want the, the dream as bad as you want the dream. And you have to, you know, <clears throat> it's great to have a bunch of people in your place working but you want, you want enthusiastic people Passion. that love what they're doing yeah. as much as, you know, those are the type of people you want. And that's, that's I, you know, that's the type of shop we run since the day we opened. What makes somebody a great leader? Well, I think, I think part of it is setting by example. I think that they have to see that you're out there willing, you know, don't just come up here and tell us a bunch of bullshit and, you know, yeah. they have to believe that you truly believe and that's truly, you're, you're as in love and as passionate about what you're talking and about. And you do whatever it takes. Exactly. Yeah. And so you have to be able to talk to people. You have to be able to motivate people. You have to uh, be able to get people to believe as you believe in what they're doing to love it as much as you do. Yeah. You know, and in, in, in my experience, that, that's, that's what it takes. That's it's awesome. worked for me. I want you to be you. I don't ever want you to act like somebody else because it's not genuine, it's not authentic. From what I've learned and as I look back on my life, everything in life is about timing. Yes. It really is about timing. The right time, the right place, the right everything. And, and I also believe that you create your own timing yes. in life too. Um, You're really lucky when you work your ass off. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, the, the thing is, everybody, <clears throat> What's the worst thing that can happen if you try? If, if the day that I walked out of that hotel, right, and I went to do this, it doesn't work out. I can go back and be a bellman again yeah. whenever I want to. You can always go back and do that. The worst part is not trying. Yeah. You have to try. Nobody's ever going to do anything without trying. It's never the right time. 
it's never the right time. It's like, I can't now. I, 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 I got this truck I just bought. I got payments on this friggin' thing. You know, I, I got this. If you do that to yourself, you'll never do anything. Forget the truck. Forget this. Forget that. Go for it. Just go for it. Believe me, I'm living proof that it can happen.